Hello all YouTubers, I am Dweller Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this Invest 92L discussion for July 27th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, it would really be nice if you guys did hit that subscribe button. I mean, I really cannot believe that I hit 800 subscribers already, so thank you guys so much. And we're on our way to 900 and eventually even more exciting the big 1,000 subscribers. So please don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as ringing the bell notifications so you will not miss my next video. Also, please do watch the whole video because this does help my channel grow significantly. So please do watch the whole video and liking and sharing this video as well. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Invest 92L. Now, earlier today, this did have a 90% chance of development that has been reduced slightly to an 80% chance, but it's still red and it's still the National Hurricane Center. In their terms, it's a high probability development. Okay, so in the next two days, it has a 70% chance of development, and within the next five days, it has an 80% chance. Okay, so shower activity with this broad area of low pressure, okay, it really hasn't changed uh, much in organization. Um, this morning, though, it actually, did, it actually did look a little less impressive. But this is saying about a thousand miles east of the Windward Islands, so it's still pretty far away, but it could reach the Windward Islands within four or five days here. And they recently, the southern part of the islands and the northern tip of South America recently got hit with Tropical Storm Gonzalo. All right, but environmental conditions will be more favorable for development over the next few days, and a tropical depression or storm could form during that time frame, three to five days. Um, this is a gradually developing system. This isn't like a rapidly developing system. We'll have to see because conditions are going to be more somewhat conducive, not like extremely conducive. This will be moving in the, this storm will be moving in a west northwest direction, about 15 to 20 miles an hour, and the Leeward Islands could see some heavy rain by late Wednesday. Okay, and that's the thing with these tropical systems. Regardless of development, there will be heavy rain. All right, so definitely, so whether it's a tropical storm, a hurricane, or not even just an invest, this this will be producing heavy rain as long as it you know tracks towards the Windward Islands. They will get some heavy rain over the next few days. Um, interest in the lesser until should definitely continue to monitor the progress of the system as you guys hopefully have been doing over the past couple of days. So looking at Invest 92L and the current storm information map here, you can see that this, I think the winds actually did go up a little bit. I remember before it was 20 miles an hour. Now it's up to 30 miles an hour. Wind gusts are up to 40 miles per hour here, but obviously the sustained winds need to be 40, not the gusts for it to be a tropical storm. Also, it doesn't need to be a certain level of organization. Um, minimum central pressure is 1,009, so that's still definitely on the higher side here. Um, Radius of circulation, okay, it's a pretty big storm. And it's 180 nautical miles, so it's a pretty larger, it's a larger system because it hasn't really fully developed yet. Uh, sometimes the storms actually do get smaller when they when they first develop into a tropical storm. Sometimes, I'm not saying all the time. Uh, Radius to maximum wind though is 150 nautical miles, so it's got a large, even though the winds are 30 miles an hour, gusts of 40, there's a large swath of that. Of where the winds are gusting to 40 miles an hour so this has a pretty big uh wingspan here or wind span i should say uh looking at the satellite, satellite imagery you can see that there's really no said low center yet okay it's just a very broad area of mid-level spin all right and we got and we have a lot of convection blossoming right over that area of spin which means it's not really gonna it hasn't really organized because usually in a tropical cyclone you have your area of spin here maybe you're low then you got all your rain activity to the northeast and maybe just to the east of it, okay? Sometimes with the subtropical systems, you have a low here, and then you got all your rain all the way to the right. But that's not the case with this. The rain is sitting right on top of where the low center, or not, or I should say, on top of where the area of spin is because there's no low center yet. But you can see there is a decent amount of convection. I think we're starting to see some re-blossoming of convection due to the heating of the day on the western side of the storm. All right, but as of the National Hurricane Center, as of their 2 o'clock update, um, they say that this is sitting at about 47 degrees west and about, I would call that about 13 degrees or so north. So those are kind of like your coordinates. I'll be able to give you exact coordinates in just a second here. All right. So looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies, um, as you can see, uh, based on the coordinates I described to you, um, looks like right about there is where the storm is. And it looks like we're in some slightly above average um, ocean water. As you can see from where it was before, it was kind of back and forth between cooler and warmer. I think now we're starting to head into an environment where the waters are like we're ha we're having we have a widespread area of yellow and orange, which means the water is definitely warmer than average. And when and if it does reach the east coast, which is definitely a possibility, all right, the waters are even more above average. But that doesn't mean the waters on the east coast are warmer. It just means that they're farther above average than say out in the Caribbean. 
So looking at the actual water temperature, you can see pretty soon it's going to start entering. Right now, it's thinking about waters of 27, 28-ish, maybe closer to 28. It will soon enter water temperatures of 29, all right, maybe even closer to 30 in some spots, but I think that's pushing it a little bit. Water temperatures will be about 29 Celsius, which is definitely towards more towards the upper 80s, all right, mid to upper 80s here, so some very warm water. And surprisingly, up there, uh, well up north in, uh, north in Canada there, you know, like the Hudson Bay, we got water temperatures, you know, right about freezing. So even in July, it's still pretty cold up there. Um, but anyway, you can see that whether this takes a suddenly track into the Caribbean or more of a track towards the southeast coast, I think either way, or even if it goes out to, even if it turns and goes out to sea like this, okay, there's a wide span of 80 degree plus water. So water temperatures for this storm shouldn't be too much of a problem beyond this point because as you can see, there's a widespread area where it could possibly go into where the water's 80 degrees plus. So I think water temperatures should not be a problem. All right, so let's take a look at some model tracks here. This is one from uh, Track the Tropics. Um, and as you can see, here's where the low is now. Um, as of the 12Z, they think it's sitting at about 45 west. Um, a lot of the models do take it uh, in more of a west-northwest track right over some of the Caribbean islands, right towards the Bahamas. The two models here, the TABM and TABD, very similar models, do take this out to sea. Um, I am not making fun of any model for saying that because that is definitely a possibility. Um, it all depends on which I'll be showing you later on the steering, the 500 millibar steering. But like I said, some models do take it more suddenly into the Caribbean. Most models take it right over the northern Windward Islands, right just to the northeast of Puerto Rico, just skimming the big islands, but heading straight towards the Bahamas, maybe. All right, where they were devastated by uh, Dorian okay, about a year ago. But, but, looking, but like I said, it could go south, it could go north, okay? These, these set of models definitely do have um, some different tracks. Uh, look at the, so this is actually the latest low, low storm location. Again, this isn't actually a, this is just where the area of spin is. There's no surface low really officially developing yet, but it's sitting at about 46, I call it about 46.2 degrees west and about 12.3 degrees north. So it has moved a little bit now more towards 46 degrees west as opposed to 45 from before. So it's moving a little bit. It's not moving too fast. Uh, taking a look at the model tracks here, this is some other model track guidance uh, from Travel Tidbits, because I see Levi, Levi Cowan here. And as you can see, a lot of the models, actually all the models agree on the track with the next five days. They all take it in the northwest direction right towards the Bahamas. Um, if you were to extend these models out a little further, they would all point up the east coast. So a few models take it towards Florida if you were to extend those out a little bit. But a few models actually also do take it up the east coast. Okay, another potential route is also Florida. It could go this way, it could go this way. Um, but it's amazing to me how all the models agree that they're, they're agreeing on this model track up until about five days out. Up until then, they all agree. So usually models don't agree like this, and that's that's a good sign that the models are all agreeing because it gives us a better idea where the storm could track. So let's take a look at some GEFS tracks, and these tracks also agree. Okay, you can see that look how much the storm strengthens, though, over the next, you know, four and six and eventually ten days or it could potentially go up to the East Coast. So these set of GEFS tracks definitely agree on the track here. Um, only a couple models take into the into the Southern Gulf and Central Gulf, uh, but there's always gonna be a couple outliers, but 97% of the models do agree that this is gonna track in a West, Northwest direction and make a turn up the East Coast. Uh, the only thing that the models don't quite agree on is how close does it get to the East Coast? You got a decent amount of models that take it this way. You got a decent amount of models that take it this way. So usually when I've seen someone's good, take a track like this, I'm just saying this climatologically, I'm not saying this will happen, but usually when I've seen these storms come from, I've seen them come from Africa, they track through the Northern Caribbean, usually they either continue on west into the Gulf and maybe a Southeast Coast or a Gulf of Mexico landfall, or they usually track out the sea. You don't, you, never, you haven't really seen too many scenarios where we have a storm like this, where this is now head straight for the East Coast to make like a Southeast landfall or a Delmarva landfall or New England landfall coming from like this direction, maybe making a track like this. You haven't seen it much. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm saying that you don't really see that too often. Usually climatologically, a lot of storms either make a Southern track through the Caribbean into the Gulf or the high is a little bit weaker and they more track out the sea, right? And maybe head towards Europe in the far distant future. Now the GEPS tracks haven't really picked up on this too much yet, but they also do agree decently that the storm will, will strengthen near the east coast because the pressure is a lot lower here, all right? Now you can see that 
a lot of the models, actually pretty much all of them, do track it near the, the southeast coast, and, if, and a few of them actually have it impacting the east coast from the Carolinas up to New England. So that's a possibility too. All right, so these models are they're scaringly are starting to agree, and I think that's uh, bad news. Because I mean, it's good news in the fact that we're certain what's going to happen, but the fact that they all agree that it's going to head towards the United States is definitely some bad news, especially considering how strong this could get, which I will show you later on in the video. So let's take a look at some Invest 92L intensity guidance now. And as you can see, a lot of the models do agree, okay, that this will get to a tropical storm. Like I said, this could change. This is early. That's why I said I would take the intensity guidance with a little bit of a grain of salt. I would take it with a grain of salt personally, even the tracking guidance. But the tracking guidance, you, still, you have to start watching out. But the intensity guidance, I wouldn't matter too much. I wouldn't worry too much about it yet because this could still have have bring some big impacts to the United States, whether it's a tropical storm or Category 1. All right, this could still bring some uh, big impacts. But a lot of the models, I mean, a good general 94% of them do say that this will become a mid-level, maybe even a stronger tropical storm. Even a few a couple models get close, if not hitting a very weak Category 1 hurricane. Kind of similar to Hurricane Hannah, which ended up becoming a, a strong Category 1 hurricane with 90 mile an hour sustained winds upon Texas landfall. So let's take a look at the um, tracks here with the GFS model. Um, I hope, hopefully I will get to show you the ensemble models as well. Um, but I'm not quite sure if I'll get to that. But here's the GFS model. I'll be showing you GFS and the GEM models. All right, and you can see that by the precipitation track, you can see the GFS model uh, still has a very decently strong storm. If you look very closely to the top right of it, you can see some reds and magentas, which is like some of the heaviest rainfall we could have on this MSLP map. So some very heavy rain according to the GFS model. But there's your storm, okay, pretty, I mean, the low center is there. It just pops on and off from time to time. But yeah, there it is. So the low kind of tracks through the Northern Caribbean and they think it's gonna kind of get dried out with a little front here. You can, you notice how the high is a little bit weaker. Um, and well, it's decently strong, but it's not too strong. Uh, and it's far off to the right. So that's going to drive this storm kind of this way along with the high. It's going to kind of drag it out to sea. And that's what the GFS model is saying is going to happen. All right. So it kind of dangles the storm out. And then here's whatever is left of it kind of absorbed in the cold front here by the uh, first week of August. So how strong do they really make the surface winds? So if you guys do see some green, as you can see, we got some greens, even a little bit of yellows on the map. So maybe a, a mid-level tropical storm already by 2 a.m. on Tuesday. So looking at this a little bit closely, you can see it does remain a tropical storm. As you can see, you got your low center there. You got some green and even some, you know, some neon green and some yellow surrounding it. So maybe some 45 to 50 mile per hour winds. All right. Um, if it had, and then it kind of sits there because there's a bunch of highs surrounding it. Um, and then I think this this is when it gets absorbed in that jet stream, absorbed with the cold front here, and it kind of gets pulled off more of a northeasterly direction. The low does sit there for a while though near the Bahamas. And if it stalls near the Bahamas, even if it's far a little bit farther away, the Bahamas could still see some dangerous waves and even some bands of rain for extended periods of time. And we know that they especially don't need that. So how about the cyclone vorticity signature here? Let's take a look at that because I think that's important in determining the storm strength. Now, luckily, now if the storm was to play out as the GFS has it right now, it would be a little weaker due to the fact that it, they do actually forecast it to move over the northern um, Windward Islands and even over Puerto Rico. And as you guys may or may not know, Puerto Rico has some mountainous regions. So Puerto Rico would definitely weaken the storm, just like how Douglas, if Douglas had made direct landfall over Hawaii, okay, that would be, obviously that'd be devastating for Hawaii, but it would also weaken Douglas a lot more. Like Douglas is leaving Hawaii. It's still a 90 mile power category one hurricane. It was supposed to be a tropical storm by this point. So because it kind of missed the direct Hawaii landfall, I think Douglas, because it stayed away from those mountainous regions, and in case you guys don't know, mountainous regions definitely do weaken tropical storms a lot, slash hurricanes. They do weaken them too. So if the storm can avoid moving over directly over the Caribbean islands, then it would hold its strength a lot more. But as you can see, even over the next week, it's just, it just, the GFS doesn't look like it has too much confidence in it. The gem model, however, is going to be acting a lot different. Now, let me go back to present time here. Let's go back to the GEFS ensembles and kind of see what they think as of like, you know, like a tracking guys. I'll even actually bring forth the European model too. So stick around towards the end of the video if you guys want to see the European model, if you want me to bring that up. But the GEFS ensembles definitely do bring us a little bit farther south. Again, this is an average of about 30 to 40 plus forecasts. So this is kind of like one, you know, it's like, a, it's like combining them all together, making a forecast out of it. That's what ensemble models are. But they have this storm moving over the Caribbean. And don't worry about the strength because because it's a GEFS ensemble, 
the cyclonic vorticities to the human eye are always going to look a little bit weaker because it's a combination of a bunch of different forecasts. Okay, expect to see some darker reds there because if this does form to a tropical cyclone, all right, but because again, it's an ensemble, the you're going to see a lot more fainter colors like yellow and light orange because it's an ensemble. That's the way that's the way they, they do it. But look at what look at what the ensembles do. Now, now at this point, the storm looks like it's taken apart a little bit, but they do have it moving up the east coast. All right, over the first few days of August, so that's something to keep watch over. Now, the wind shear not only is one thing I think that's holding the storm back a little bit. Um, because as you can see, this is the region where we'll be going in the next five days, and you can see that the wind shear is slightly to even possibly moderately above average, at about 10 or 15 knots. All right, so that's that's the one thing that I think is going to be against the storm. The ocean water, we're doing fine, but according to the GFS model here, um, I definitely think that the wind shear could be a little bit above average, and that could that could pose uh, that could be a problem for Invest 92L. All right, so just keep that in mind when. You know, you're tracking the system when you look at the like the model tracks for example don't jump to a conclusion because of what one model thinks or what 10 models think because that could certainly change in the near future now let's take a look here at our ship's diagnostic message i i look at this with you guys a lot uh wind shear looks pretty steady all right kind of high right now which is why i think it could, might not develop that much it will have a window though where the wind shear will drop for about 6 to 15 knots then it goes back up closer to 30 knots over the next week so it's going to have a little window to try to get its act together a little bit. And I think, frankly, that's what the GFS model actually did show. If you look at this, let me actually go all the way back. Notice how when GFS made this, made this a tropical storm, right away they made it a strong tropical storm. And why do you think they did that? Because the wind shear had, they had a brief window of where the wind shear was weakening. Then they have a weaker tropical storm because the wind shear starts going back up over time. And this is actually a GFS version of this. This is pretty much the only version that they use, but this is a somewhat varied from the GFS model. Not fully, though. All right, but you can see that the ocean water, um, like I said, not a problem. 27, it will go up over time, actually. 28, 29, all right, then dropping back to 28.9, but still staying well into the mid-80s, if not close to the upper 80s. Heat content, that is definitely not going to be a problem, at least over the next five days. It could drop a little bit over the next week as it heads closer to the East Coast, if it does. I'm saying it heads closer to the East Coast. I'm not saying it's going to head... You know, landfall. I'm just saying it's heading towards the East Coast. But land, uh, but um, heat content is definitely high right now. And the storm, that's another thing too. This storm is moving pretty fast. All right. It may not look like it on the models, but the storm is actually moving at about 23 miles an hour plus right now, closer to 25 miles an hour. And that's very fast for a hurricane. That's like, you know, that's kind of like I-95 kind of speed here um, for us. I mean, I'm not saying it's moving at 65 miles an hour, but, but moving 25 miles an hour for a tropical storm is definitely fast. But look at this. Look how the speed slows over time. And if this is correct, this storm could be stationary by, by next week. So that would not be good. So we're going to take a look at the gem model and then briefly the European and then maybe some model tracks here. So looking at the uh, gem model, notice what they do. And this is interesting. They bring the storm over the Bahamas with a decent 1,000 to 1,005 millibars of pressure, one of your not bad tropical cyclones. All right. Then once it moves up the East Coast, this is where things get interesting. 996 millibars of pressure off the coast of Florida, just off the coast of Florida, all right here, by 180 hours out. This is by August 4th. Here's August 5th in the morning. Almost looks like Faye a little bit, Tropical Storm Faye. This is sitting right around the Delmarva, all just off the coast of Virginia Beach in North Carolina here, just off the coast of Hatteras, by Wednesday morning at August 5th. Um, now, this is something to, again, take with a grain of salt because we're not quite sure yet, but this is pretty scary what the gem model is doing with this. Moves right up the northeast coast into New England. I think this storm's a little bit too far offshore. If, if it were to take this exact track in strength, I think it looks a, a little bit too far off the coast to produce, you know, like direct impacts like rain and wind. But we could still see some gusty winds and uh, maybe some high waves if it were to take this track in strength. But I don't think it's going to produce any major, major impacts um, if it were to take this track. But then it hits um, Halifax there, and then we start to see some problems. So take a look at those surface winds. How strong does the gem model make this? All right, how strong are the winds they have this thing coming together with? Um, like the GFS model, they do have it becoming maybe like a pretty strong tropical storm with some night, some decent oranges. You know, winds of 50 knots, maybe close to 60 miles per hour. All right, and then as it moves northwest, weakens a little bit. Then it starts completely resurging into a tropical storm, um, and then a major tropical cyclone, if not. Maybe potentially a hurricane. 
category one, category two, possibly. But like I said, this is one model at one model run. So it's something to take a little bit kind of a grain of salt, but definitely something to keep your eyes on. So let's take a look at the Cyclone Vorticity signature here. Um, as you can see, they make it a pretty strong storm, and then they kind of have it weakening a little bit. All right, and then it, it will eventually just start getting its strength. You see the dark reds and the blacks are start coming out here, um, as, as the map shows you here. Um, but tr but tracking awfully close to the east coast, and this will be bad news. All right, so watch out for Invest 92L here. Looking at the wind shear anomalies, though, what's kind of weird is that the gem model still predicts well above average wind shear, but yet they do make this a strong system. So could this be a? This could be. I mean, this is a pretty rare setup, but we have seen subtropical cyclones with like 100 mile an hour winds, even though kind of like the way Sandy was when Sandy made landfall, even though it was a category one hurricane with estimated winds about 80 to 90 miles an hour, it was technically considered a post-tropical cyclone, okay? It was an extra tropical cyclone, even though it had winds of 90 miles an hour, it was starting to lose a little bit of its organization, but it was still considered a category one hurricane, even though it was an extra tropical cyclone with 90 mile an hour winds. This could be the same way. If there's too much shear, all right, this joint could get up, you know, if it gets up to category one, two strength, and it could become an extra tropical cyclone with 100 mile an hour winds. It would be considered a category two hurricane, but it would also be extra tropical. So that's something that could possibly occur as well. Now, they're getting a little confident here. The NCEP and the GEM model are saying that we could have a 90, upwards of 100% chance of development here with 92L. So they're getting pretty gutsy. Um, same exact thing here with just the NCEP with the ensembles here, 100% chance of development according to them. Um, and really, no matter how, yeah, no, unless, it's, uh, unless, it's because, unless it's like a tropical depression, I would never really name a tropical cyclone 100% chance of development because you can never guarantee it. 90, 95% sure, but never really quite make it 100% because you're not, I mean, there is also that sl slight chance that it may not develop. But if it's a tropical depression, then it's 100% chance of development because then it's already a depression, so it's already developed. So looking at the ensembles here, they all take it. The NCP ensembles all agree, um, taking it, taking it up the East Coast, except for one model takes it to the Gulf. But you know, there's always going to be that one outlier. But that's something uh, to watch as well. Now before I go, definitely want to take a look at the European model real quick. Um, I specifically wanted to take a look at the Euro on the uh, Cyclone Vorticity signature because that's one of the maps they provide on tropical tidbits. As you can see, the European model doesn't really do much with this. I mean, they take it over the, they have it moving over the islands, which was a scenario I talked to you guys about earlier that would make the storm a little bit weaker. All right, then it brings it down to the Gulf as a very weak storm, maybe a depression, if that, and then it kind of brings it on shore all right, as a very weak storm. So we'll see, uh, but the European doesn't do too much with this. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Okay, different models are saying different things. Definitely something we're going to watch over the next few days and over the next week. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I am the weather dude. Signing off. Till next time, catch you guys next video.